those uh, who missed the lecture on 1.6 because of the technical issues I was having, uh, we're going to take a look at it now and uh, go through this. So uh, today we are looking at section 1.6. Um, actually, this not till Wednesday, so later today we will be doing a review. Those are posted in Canvas. Uh, some sample questions. We'll work through the questions, um, and I will. I'm trying to use a new system, and I th think that will allow me to record just fine during class. We'll we'll check that one out. So, uh, but it it won't be live streamed. It'll be recorded while I'm doing it, and then I will post it after I finish class. Okay, so. Let's move ahead, and then next we have three more sections. We'll do an exam review over that, and then we've got our exam coming up. Okay, so what are some of the words we can use to describe infinity? Um, from class, we had words like uh, unbounded or boundless, uh, limitless, Or unlimited, um, you know, this idea that it's very, very large, but not just large because it's it's an uncountable large. It it kind of keeps going. So the idea with infinity, it's we can think of it. It's a destination that you never get to because when you think you're at infinity, uh, you still have further to go. Uh, now, uh, philosophically, it's a big question: Can we actually get there? Well, maybe. So, uh, but let's see, mathematically, there's going to be two stories. Uh, there is when a limit is infinity. Remember, when we're talking about limits, we're talking the limit is a y value. So as, as x gets close to something or other or goes in some direction, what is y? That is what we call the limit. Okay, so it's a y value. Um, so a limit at infinity means that the y value is going towards infinity for some given x value. Okay, so this can and we'll we'll look at some examples. Um, the story you might anticipate, story two, is about x going to infinity and what happens to y. So two types of stories: x is getting close to some value, and y is getting incredibly huge. So which one of these is correct? So early on we just said well. Um, as x goes to zero right here's uh, we plug in zero and we said that this doesn't exist um, mainly because it is your experience as as the denominator gets very very small the number itself actually gets very big so it's going towards infinity so wouldn't it make sense to to go with this statement that as x goes to zero this becomes incredibly large so it goes to infinity well in one sense it's uh since infinity is not a number, uh, that's why we said it does not exist when we wanted the limit to be a number. Infinity is not a number, but in another sense we could look at it, well, if it's not a number, what's happening to it? What direction is it? Is it going to positive or negative infinity? What's happening? So we could use this, and so we're going to open it up. We could still say in the, the setting where the limit is a number that the limit does not exist. Uh, but today, in this section, we're going to say we just want to know what direction things are going. So we come up with this definition that when we're using this notation, x is getting close to some value a. And again, it could be 0, it could be 1, it could whatever it is, some value. Um, as the function gets close to that, the y value is going off to infinity. So the graph would look, um, well, we'll look at a few examples, but you know, it's going up that way, or maybe going down towards negative infinity. We'll see, we'll define that later. But here's an example here. Um, and the reason we have the x squared, actually, these would be limits from the left and right. Yeah, so if the limit's going to exist, both the left and the right side have to be going to the same place. So 
this limit exists because both the left and the right are going to positive infinity. Okay, so the limit itself exists. We could call it infinity. We could also, again, back in the old days when we were just saying the limit has to be a number, we could, you know, an answer could be it does not exist. Um, so we have to read the context of the question. Um, you could always fudge yourself a little bit and just say if you weren't sure if they're wanting which answer, uh, the numerical limit does not exist. However, it's shooting to infinity. Okay. Other limits, as we look, we could go towards negative infinity. Uh, and that's what this would look like. Again, both sides shooting down the left side and the right side. Uh, if we were to follow these, um, they just really have, if we want to think of it, these have arrows. They just keep on going down, down, down. So the y values are going towards negative infinity. We can also talk about left and right limits. Um, and that's going to be helpful because, as we know, a number of uh, rational functions, one side goes to negative infinity, the other side goes to positive infinity. So the limits themselves don't exist, but the left limit exists and the right limit exists. So here's our examples of a left limit going to positive infinity. And again, they don't even bring in what the picture looks like on the right side. So they're just saying, we're just considering the left-hand limit because of this little negative. So kind of thinking of it as coming from the negative side. Now that's not quite accurate, right? Because this is positive here, but um, coming from the left. And if we think of being in the center, the left side is the negative side. So that's why this uh, little symbol makes sense. If we come from the right side, which is the positive side, uh, that's this picture. So again, we're just shooting up and up and up and up, getting y is going towards infinity as we come close to some x value a um, for this function. So that would go there. And then, of course, we've got uh, the possibility of going towards negative infinity. So here's, again, from the left, this is shooting down. So that's what that graph would look like. And coming from the right, that's what this graph would look like. Now, since we don't have a both a left and a right limit, we, we wouldn't say, we can't really say anything about the, the limit itself, but we could say the limit from the left or the limit from the right, okay? So those are the concepts we're working with. And as you look at these, um, one way of solving many of these problems with limits is, is actually having, the, uh, having your graphing calculator graph it. And what you see is what you get. Um, now, sometimes it's going to be hard to figure out what those values are, but, but we can by using the table, using the trace feature, and those kind of things. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So um, what we're doing now is really um, these two stories, a story of uh, one where, where y goes to infinity. We're really talking about vertical asymptotes. And so... Um, this is using um, using limits just gives us a uh, a more formal way to define what a vertical asymptote is. It really is as we as x gets close to a value, uh, the y value is going off to infinity. And again, one of the infinities either positive infinity or negative infinity. So these two here are the complete limits. Um, in some sense, we also need to be able to talk about the left and the right side. So this is, these are the left limit. And over here with the positive side, these would be the right limit. And oftentimes, again, with asymptotes, unless it's a, an x squared, an even power, we get uh, one side going to negative infinity, one side going to positive. So these left and right limits are, are very important to, to be able to use. Okay, so is there a, just kind of out there, is there a function with an infinite number of asymptotes? Um, and actually there is, if we think about it, uh, the tangent function, because and, and basically any trig function that has um, something in the denominator, so cotangent would work, uh, secant and cosecant both have uh, infinite number of asymptotes. So the 
the asymptotes themselves keep repeating. In this case, everywhere that cosine is equal to zero, we're going to get an asymptote. So those go on forever and ever. Okay, so there's an infinite number of asymptotes, infinity on top of infinity, if you want to think of it that way. Okay. All right, I think we're good to look at the second story, which is a limit at infinity. So this story is about what, as x is getting huge, so, you know, when we think of a graph, we're going, x is going towards infinity, so we're getting very huge in x value, and then the question is, what happens to the y value? So... Uh, which way is the, the y value. Sometimes, uh, and, and again, this is the story of horizontal asymptotes. Sometimes it goes towards a particular y value, and we've got some sort of a, you know, an asymptote we're going towards. Um, sometimes it goes off to infinity itself, so the limit might be infinity at infinity. So, But the question is really looking at x going. So, you know, this, these questions come from the limit as x goes to infinity, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And then what we're, we're trying to ascertain is what's happening. The limit is, again, going to be a y value. And if we've got a horizontal asymptote, then it'll be going towards a particular y value. If we don't, it sort of diverges, as we would say. Uh, it could be going towards positive or negative infinity. And then we're going to look at some examples through these. So what does a limit at infinity look like? Well, something like this. Uh, as x is getting, you know, going this way towards infinity, uh, what we see is we're getting a limit of y. We're getting a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this just kind of keeps coming out. So whatever this value is. Um, now, just to be sure, because some of us will, you know, say, okay, what is an asymptote? It's what a function gets close to without ever touching. Now, this is an asymptote as well, but it's, uh, notice it is touching it in multiple places, but it's dampering down so it gets closer, you know, the, the oscillation kind of gets closer and closer, and it's going to, it's going to go to this limit eventually when we get sufficiently large when x gets very, very big. And what does that mean? Uh, it means trillions and on towards it, out in the infinities. Sometimes it can happen sooner, uh, but the, our concept is just what's happening way out there. Uh, and at some time, it will, uh, it will damper down. Okay, so an asymptote, an asymptote can be touched or crossed, uh, but it's just what is happening way out here when we're kind of out into close to infinity, whatever that means, right? Um, okay, so now we've got a definition of a horizontal asymptote. So we can also think of these in terms of algebra that we would have learned in our college algebra or pre-calculus course. These are just the, asymptote, the horizontal asymptote. Well, we're going to evaluate them in those ways. Um, but we're going to see, again, like we said, uh, x is going to infinite, uh, positive infinity or negative infinity, and then we get some kind of a limit, limiting factor. Or we don't. It goes off to positive or negative infinity itself. So story one and two together. Um, let's see which here it is. Okay, so we could look for vertical asymptotes, and we kind of see that happening here. Um, so we could draw this one in. Here's our horizontal asymptote that looks like, uh, let's see where our, here's zero, that would be x equals negative one. We have a vertical asymptote. So we could say for this one, let me put it up here, we certainly could say the limit as x goes towards negative one is going to be positive infinity. And the reason we can say that is because the left side goes to positive infinity and the right side goes to positive infinity. Okay. There's another vertical asymptote that, again, everyone in class sort of helped me out. I, I sort of missed this one, because, um, but we could draw this line in. And this one, 
looks like it's at 1, 2, so this is x equals 2. Now, we've got a left-hand limit going to negative infinity, a right-hand limit going to positive infinity, so we could write this the limit as x goes towards 2 from the left. Um, I guess this notation wasn't really good. I should have an equals of the function is going to be equal to negative infinity. You see that that here, right? Um, and at the limit, as x goes to positive 2 from the right of the function, is going to be positive infinity. And again, we can emphasize it with a plus, but you don't need to write that with the answers. And I don't know, maybe it, I don't know how WebWorks would handle it. So I just want to emphasize it is positive infinity. And so when we come to here, the limit as x goes to 2, since they're not going in the same direction, this one we have to say does not exist. And I think in WebWorks they're just having you put a D or D and E. Just look at the instructions. Sometimes they, they change that around. But the, the limit itself does not exist. We also have um, some horizontal asymptotes, and we can kind of see one here. So draw that across. And there's one up here. So draw that one across. Okay. And these appear to be, um, let's see, there's 0, 1, 2. This appears to be y equals 2. And again, the limit is going to be 2. And this one looks like 2, 3, 4, y equals 4. Now, that for these ones, when is the limit equal to 2, the, the horizontal limit? Well, it's we're seeing what's happening here. This is, is as x goes to negative infinity. So then we can write that the limit as x goes to negative infinity, of course, not from the left or right, you just can't get it, um, of this function is going to be equal to 2. So the y value is 2 as x gets really big in the negative direction. As we go to the positive infinity direction, um, what that's when this one here is going to come into play, right? So as x is getting really big um, negatively, uh, sorry, really big positively, so this would tell us that the limit as x goes to positive infinity of the function is equal to 4. So we've got a Horizontal asymptote at 4, horizontal asymptote at 2. But again, those come from the x going in various directions. So this is a way to describe this graph. We also can see what's happening at interior points of uh, negative 1 and 2. Um, for negative 1, we can say the limit itself is going to infinity. By knowing that, we know both the left and the right side are going to infinity. So we could visualize that um, when we get to the, the value of 2, we have to talk about a left limit and a right limit so that because they're going in different directions. Okay. So here's, uh, as we go to apply things, we're going to use this sort of definition, theorem, law, this result that's always true. So as that x goes to positive or negative infinity, what's in if we have some function 1 over x to the n? And n can be is an integer value, positive integer value, um, that the function itself will go towards 0. So what we're going to do is we'll do that with this one two ways. You can look in the textbook, and I'll, I'll let you do that because that's where I took this one. And they show a way of, of um, dividing by this uh, large, the largest degree. So what they do is they divide or multiply the top by 1 over x squared and then they do the same thing to the bottom 1 over x squared so that's a value of 1 so that's you know we're really multiplying by 1 but if you do all that what you end up is uh, x squared divided by x squared is 1 so you end up with 3 x divided by x squared is 1 over x and then negative 2 divided by x squared is going to be negative 2 over x squared. And in the denominator, 5x squared divided by x squared, that's going to give us 5. 
four uh, x is going to give us four over x squared. Or not or just x to the one because this x cancels with that, and then we multiply through by one over x squared. You get one over x squared. And again, look through the text. It does it step by step. But as we're taking the limit, we can use our limit rule and look at each of these individually. Um, and what ends up happening from, from this rule over here is this part becomes 0, this part becomes 0, this part becomes 0, this part. And this is the limit of a constant. So the top will go towards 3, the bottom will go towards 5. And so we can say the limit of this function limit as x goes to infinity of the function, I'll just call it f of x, is going to be 3 fifths. Okay. The other way to do this is to is sort of what we did in algebra. We just recommend or recognize that in the end, all we have to do is consider the two largest, the largest in the top, the largest in the bottom. And in this case, uh, since they're the same degree, x squared cancels with x squared, so this limit's going to be 3 fifths. So this is sort of our shortcut. Uh, you can go through the long process of doing everything, but each time you do it, you're going to see these guys, the lower uh, degrees don't matter um, when we get to infinity. They matter in the smaller numbers, yes, when x is smaller, but when x gets towards infinity in either direction, those don't matter so much. One thing we are going to want to watch out for, and we'll see some examples, is when we go towards negative infinity, we got to see what happens. Because even powers is always, you know, a negative times a negative, that's always going to give us a positive. But if we have odd powers, we just have to be careful about that negative. So we'll go through a few of those. Um, again, emphasizing that we can analyze these things with graphs. Um, here I pulled up that for this particular problem, they're asking us for the limits as x goes towards negative 4, both from the left, the right, and and just the limit, the two-sided limit, right? So one easy way to do this is to graph it. And then we start to see, OK, at negative 4, we've got this asymptote here. Maybe I should have done that in a different color. Well, it's too late. No, it's never too late. <laughs> we'll put this asymptote. There's another one here at zero, but they're not asking for it. I, you know, I kind of missed it that at zero. But what we can do to talk about this, let's switch over to green, is what we see that um, as we go towards negative four from the left, that's this part of the graph. What's happening? We're going towards positive infinity. So. And, and you'll look in, in web works, they say to put a P for positive infinity. Um, as we come to negative 4 from the right, the side's going down, we're going towards negative infinity, and they say to put in an N. And so since they're going in different directions, the limit itself, the two-sided limit, does not exist. So they say put a D. Okay, so that's the way. Um, but... They just give you this. They don't give you the graph. Um, but again, you can always graph things. Um, I, again, and I use Desmos just because it's easy to see and, and see what's going on. You'll want to use your graphing, handheld graphing calculator, because that's what you can use on test. But uh, that gives you the opportunity, once you've used Desmos, to see what's working, um, to learn how to do the same thing with your graphing calculator. Um, and as there are, I find, everyone has a slightly different version, um, look how to do graphing with your particular um, graphing calculator. All right, so here's some other examples. And again, for this one, um, I'm just going to notice that we're going towards negative infinity, so we're going to be careful about that. In the numerator, I take the one with the biggest um, degree and in the denominator I take the one with the biggest degree make sure you you know you're considering the negatives what we're doing is these guys won't matter they they will just go to zero again if you divide everything by x cubed you'll see that the other ones will drop out and 
what we're left with is really 10 over negative 3. But I want to also at this point just emphasize we're looking at this and we're looking at this and we're looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So when I cube a negative number, I'm going to get a negative number, right? Negative times negative times negative ends up being a negative. So what I get in the numerator is actually negative 10. What I get in the denominator is actually negative, negative 11, which is going to give me a positive. So it's negative 10 over positive 11, which in the re end result is negative 10 over 11. Now, if you had not considered that and just said, oh, it's going to be negative 11, you would have got the right answer. But you've just got to be careful because occasionally, depending upon how this is all set up, it might make a difference. So watch for those odd powers and realize that when we go to negative infinity with an odd power, um, our limit is going towards a negative number. Okay, so they do cancel out, but before they cancel out, they give us, uh, they tell us we're going towards a negative direction. And um, so we'll just be careful as we get to that limit. Okay, here's another one. Um, now this one's going to be different. Uh, the largest degree in the top is 6x. The largest in the bottom is 5x squared. And again, we're going towards negative infinity. So we want to just be careful on everything that's going to happen. So we've got six, oops, not equals yet. Um, cancel that out. 6x. Oh, this is not looking good at all. Um, certainly don't want that part. You know, let's just start over. OK. Uh, limit as x goes to negative infinity really just have to look at 6x over 5x squared. Before we think of canceling these out, let's see, as I plug in a negative infinity on the top, I'm going to get a negative 6, right? Um, our, well, these are going to cancel out, but I'm, 6x would be going towards a negative number. Um, 5x squared, when you square that big negative, it's going to become positive, so the denominator is going to be positive. And as I cancel things out, um, right, this x on the top cancels 1 in the bottom, so there's a 5x squared. So negative 6 over 5x. Um, so in this case, they don't just kind of cancel out. Well, as x gets really big, what's going to happen? This is going to go to 0. So you could think of it going to negative 0, but we don't really talk about negative or positive 0 because it's right in the middle. It's going to 0. So in the end, um, I, I probably could have got sloppy with the signs that were going to negative infinity and just said, OK, it's going to go to 0. But I just want you to, again, consider each of your steps. Um, when we're going to negative infinity, we have to consider what each one's doing. Because at some point, maybe only one out of every 10 questions, it might, be, it might have a different value. So if we were going like towards negative one, that's different than going towards positive one, right? Uh, just something to consider. Here's another one. And again, since we only need to, to consider the largest degree, uh, we kind of have to multiply these out, um, foil them out. But really, all we have to do is look at what's going to give us the largest degree will be negative x times 5x. So we're going to analyze this as a limit as x goes towards positive infinity, and that's going to give us negative 5x squared. In the denominator, we just do this part and this part, negative 6 times negative, or negative 6 times positive 4, it's going to be negative 24x squared. We're going to positive infinity, so we square them. Um, signs are not going to change. The x squareds can cancel, and so we've got a negative 5 over a negative 24. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that's a limit of 5 24 I think I did that right. Yeah. OK. Um, radical functions. Now, um, 
I'm going to show you the, the quick way I did this, um, and then we'll go through and we'll do a step-by-step. -step. We'll look at these, because one way to do this is to, uh, algebraically, we can multiply by the conjugate to get these things out of the square roots and, and kind of analyze it algebraically. We can also analyze it <laughs> graphically. And if you look at this graph, what it ends up doing is we see as x gets really big, this is getting closer and closer. We look at our limits here. It's getting closer to zero. Now we might need to trace out, does it really go to zero? Because there's a few I know in the text that go to like one tenth or something. So we might need to zoom in just to verify that it's actually going to zero. Um, or you get a little lazy with web works, you enter zero and it says it's the right answer. That's all you have to worry about. Um, so let me back up and show another way uh, so what we would do is multiply by the conjugate. What's the conjugate? Well, it's um, this plus this. So we're going to multiply by x squared plus 7 plus square root of x squared minus 4. That's a conjugate. Now, when we multiply by this, we're ch actually going to change this, aren't we? So what we need to do is actually multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate, because that's now going to be a value of 1, right? And so we're going to think of this as a function over 1. In the numerator, what we get is when you take a square root times a square root, that undoes it. So, and again, it's a difference of squares is what we're, you know, going to end up with a negative. So the middle term will cancel out. So all we end up with is, in the front, we end up with x squared plus 7. And then we're going to, the last part is a negative times a positive. It's going to give us a negative. I'm going to put a little thing here. And square root times square root is going to give us x squared minus 4 inside there. Then we're going to need to distribute that negative okay, as it comes out. And so we'll get a negative x squared and a positive 4. Maybe I'll just go ahead and do that with a different color. Negative x squared and a positive 4. And then we'll be able to combine like terms. Um, and so I'm going to do that part and just say, okay, in the denominator, what are we going to get? Well, we get this part here. So we'll come down here. So combining like terms, x squared minus with this, that combines to 0. 7 plus 4 is going to give us 11. In the denominator, we get the square root of x squared plus 7 plus the square root of x squared minus 4. And then now how we deal with these is we are going to um, it's kind of like all these things we have to do, right? We are going to We're going to multiply by 1 over x squared, right, because that's what we have here. Actually, if you think of this as square root of x squared, so 1 over x is really all we need to do, and 1 over x. So in the numerator now, we're going to have 11 over x. If we take its limit as x goes to infinity, the top is going to go to 0, so that's good. We just have to make sure that the bottom doesn't go to 0, and then we're done. So graphically, we saw that this did go to 0, so that's looking good. Uh, when we distribute this to both of these, what we're going to get the whole thing over x. Um, but what we're going to make, what we're going to do is when we bring this x in, we're going to write that x is actually equal to on the square root of x squared, right? And so that allows us to bring it inside and, and do some algebra with it. So we're going to do this as a square root. I'll do this as two steps because I think there, the, the text shows it, but it doesn't really explain it. And it, you know, it's, it's important to understand that this x is the same thing as square root of x squared. And that's what allows us to work through all these pieces. So since we've got square roots and square roots, we can bring it inside. And 
as we do, it's going to distribute to both parts. So finally, we get 11 over x. So this is going to go here and here. x squared divided by x, you know, we're bringing it into the same radical. Again, you could write that step. But x squared divided by x squared is going to be 1. So that gives us 1 plus 7 over x squared plus this side, x squared divided by x squared is 1 minus 4 over x squared. And now we can actually, again, we're taking the limit all the way along here as x goes to infinity. And we can use our, OK, as this part goes to infinity, this is going to become 0. As this part, this part will become 0. This part will become 0. But that's the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1. So what we get is we get 0 over 2, which is 0, just like the graph showed us. OK. Um, but you may need to do this in some of them because, again, sometimes what ends up happening is um, I think there's one that there's a, like a 5x left over and the x is canceled, so the top doesn't go to 0. And so if the top's not going to 0, we actually have a limit. And a lot of times that limit is close. It's like I, I worked with one and it was 1 tenth. That's very close to 0. You might think it's going to 0, but it says no wrong. It's going towards 1 tenth. Okay, so this is a way of algebraically getting through it when the graph itself doesn't really help or isn't accurate. So our summary for today, uh, we, when, when the limit is an infinity, uh, that's the y, then we've got a vertical asymptote. When the limit is at infinity, or uh, actually shouldn't have this word is, limit at infinity, that's x going towards infinity, we get horizontal asymptotes. Um, so one thing we want to remember is consider the signs that we're going to do. So if we go to positive infinity or negative infinity, we might get different signs depending upon whether we have even or odd exponents. Um, and that the graphs will reveal the asymptotic behavior. Um, or it might not be asymptotic. It might be like a replaceable. It might be a hole in the graph. So we should see that with the graph, though. The graph is very helpful. So being able to graph these, uh, getting proficient graphing with your graphing calculator will be helpful. Um, and, um, and again, keep in touch with me if you're, you're having some problems. We'll see what we can do. But there are resources online uh, learning how to use the various features of whichever calculator you have. I've used both the uh, TI-84, 83, 84, and the Casio, I think it's a CG FX50. Um, and, and I look online, YouTube has a lot of them. But anyway, just look for how to use those things. There's a lot of videos out there that will help you get through those. So uh, last week's work is all due by Thursday, so we're going to do a review today that allows you to maybe hopefully get all your questions answered, uh, work through any of the problems by Thursday. That would be good because we're going to start into Chapter 2 next. Um, start working on the 15 questions for 1.6. Those are due Sunday um, so that we can keep moving forward. Okay, uh, And I didn't get them posted Tuesday, but I posted them this morning. Um, to the uh, as an announcement, I think I did. Let me check that. Uh, I also put them in as a review module um, with the types of questions we'll look at in class on Wednesday. All right. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can. Uh...